Welcome to a holiday episode of News by Muse. As always, I am your host, Manny Gomez. What makes it a holiday episode? Well, um, it's the holidays and we're doing an episode, so basically that's it. I hope that you and your family had a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, all the best in going forward. Uh, with all of us now in full holiday mode, I wanted to start at looking at a few holiday movies and series that are coming up that are going to keep the festive mood going in your house. Let's take a look. We'll get started with Prime Video's Candy Cane Lane, starring Eddie Murphy, Tracy Ellis Ross, and Jillian Bell. This holiday comedy adventure follows a man on a mission to win his neighborhood's annual Christmas home decoration contest. But his desperate ambitions lead him to making a deal with the very mischievous elf. Now Chris, played by Murphy, must stop the 12 days of Christmas from wrecking havoc on the whole town. I spoke with director Reginald Hudlin about the film and relating to Chris. I'm a father, I've got kids, and... You know, we feel the pressure, you know, of living in this world where, you know, you're, you you're, you know, you, you, you know, you, it, it's uncertain economic times and you want to make everybody happy. Your kids are growing up and I go, that's me. <laughs> so, and we all need a little bit of magic to make it all work out. For the full interview, along with other interviews with the creative team of the film, visit our website. Candy Cane Lane will be available exclusively on Prime Video this Friday. And I'm moving over to Disney+, Plus. now available on their streaming service, is their latest holiday film, The Naughty Nine, where a troublemaking fifth grader is left without a present on Christmas morning. Figuring he had made the naughty list, he puts together a team of naughty listers to help him with an elaborate heist in Santa's village. News by Muse with Michael Sandoval caught up with the cast of the movie. The most funnest part of filming was definitely the people I got to work with. Julia didn't feel like I was like just working and doing... I honestly felt like I was just playing around with them on set. Um, I think the best part was just hanging around the people on set and just having a great time filming the scenes and jumping onto the airplanes. Jumping, uh, jumping off it and just having a great time. <laughs> I agree. Um, I feel like there was a lot of chemistry on set, so that kind of translates in the movie, so you see all of that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, um, yeah, there was a really a lot of great people that I had the opportunity to work with. Um, and a lot of the time when I'm filming, I don't... Um, Sometimes, you know, there might not be a lot of kids on set. So um, when I filmed this movie, it was really great because there was a lot of other people my age. So there was a lot of people that I could really just relate to and hang out with on an offset. So I think a lot of the relationships that ends up like coming across in the in the film, a lot of those are, are really real and genuine. So it made it really easy and it was really great. Now at Hallmark Channel's Countdown of Christmas, we have films like Haul Out the Holly Lit Up, a sequel to last year's film, Emily and Jared must lead the Evergreen Lane HOA to another successful Christmas season, even if new neighbors stir up the pot. News by Muses Hannah Fletcher chatted with Melissa Peterman at a Hallmark event about her character Pam. I love Pam. Pam is like very wound tight. She's a crafter. She loves Christmas. She likes. She loves to follow the rules and do it right. But underneath that, she's really um, just kind of a softy. And what I love about her is I love her wardrobe. I love the hair that Pam has. Like my character is, she has a whole look, and I love it. And we had an amazing team, Allison, who did our, our wardrobe. So anyway, it was awesome. I loved everything about her. I, I want to be. I hope. I hope Pam has. More, I hope we do more of these. Learn more about this film and others that are part of the Hallmark Channel's Countdown to Christmas, as always, on our website, MuseTV.net. Y para mi gente en español, we have the fourth season of The Viaje con los Derves. This season has a holiday twist to it, as they wanted to do something special for the youngest member of the family, Aitana. So, they headed to northern Finland, where they say it's like Christmas every day. I spoke with the family in a Spanish interview about the success of the show. This is a series that we have visto ya hasta la cuarta temporada, y es un proyecto que que se esperaban que iba iba a poder tener tanto tiempo y tanto apoyo del público. No, no. La verdad es que la la primera vez cuando se planteó esto era como experimento, ¿no? Era un experimento y y yo le tenía pavor. Yo dije, estoy seguro. Eh, no sabes, a poquito antes de que salía dije. A ver si no es el fin de mi carrera, porque me imaginaba la gente diciendo, ¿y a mí qué me importan tus viajes? ¿A mí qué me importa dónde se van? Este, presumidos, qué sé yo. O sea, pensé que la gente lo iba a tomar incluso hasta mal, ¿sabes? Como que, a, a, a nosotros qué nos importa dónde se van de viaje o por qué nos vienen a presumir sus viajes, qué sé yo. No, al revés. La verdad es que la gente le ha encantado 
porque sienten que nos conocen más como seres humanos, como personas, y, a, y, a, y mientras se divierten y nos conocen, también conocen otras partes del mundo. Entonces creo que, creo que esa fórmula le ha gustado mucho a la gente. This latest season of The Viaje con los Derbez is available now on VIX. Moving on to the all-important Thanksgiving box office news. The headlines this past holiday weekend is not about the first place movie. It's not even about the second place movie. It's about the shocking third place finish of yet another Disney disappointment. I'm surely they wish more people went to see their latest film, but we'll get to that in a minute. In first place, The Hunger Games, the ballad of songbirds and snakes, wins the box office for the second weekend in a row, making $42 million over the five-day holiday weekend bringing their global box office total to $200 million. And in second place, a big win for Apple TV as Ridley Scott's Napoleon, starring Joaquin Phoenix, wraps up the weekend with a better than expected $32.5 million over the five days. We can call this a big win despite its $200 million budget due to the fact that it shouldn't be beating out family films and also Apple values the success of their films differently than other studios. Now in third place is the surprising Disney disappointment, Wish, which in its opening five-day holiday weekend was only able to bring in $31.7 million domestically, with a global total of $49 million. And believe it or not, it had a similar budget as Napoleon. Last year, Disney Animation also struck out with Strange World during the Thanksgiving weekend that only brought in $18 million. This is the same studios that brought you Encanto, Frozen, Moana, and Wreck-It Ralph the previous years. What happened to the magic? And in fourth place is another animated film that is doing just fine, Universal DreamWorks Animation's Trolls Band Together, at $25.3 million over the holiday weekend. It's in its second week and has already globally grossed $145 million, which is good as it only cost $95 million to make. Now let's wrap up the top five with some blood and guts. We're talking about Sony's Thanksgiving which in its second week brought in an additional $11.1 million over the five days, bringing its total to $24 million overall. This on a $15 million budget. Horror undoubtedly proving to be very profitable in 2023. Speaking of profitable horror, Five Nights at Freddy's has become Blumhouse's highest grossing film of all time at just over $283 million, passing 2016 split. This is an even more admirable accomplishment as the film was also released on the same day on streaming. And unfortunately, on the other side of that spectrum, Marvel Studios, The Marvels, has overall made $76 million domestically and $187 million globally. It's currently shaping up to be the first MCU movie to fall short of $100 million here in the States. Before we wrap up, let's talk about a movie that I am very excited for you guys to finally get to watch as it's getting its US release, Godzilla Minus One. In our last video, we showed you some of the conversations we had with the director and lead star of the film. Now let's see what some familiar faces had to say about one of cinema's biggest stars. More Godzilla, the better. You know, I love seeing everybody's different interpretations of the character. Um, I feel like there's a Godzilla for everybody out there right now. What do you feel makes Godzilla so iconic that it's been able to have him be in films for so many decades? Uh, he's a timeless character. You know, he represents so much about what I think we're all collectively feeling about our place in the world. Uh, so that resonates. He's truly mythic. It's always stayed consistent to themes, right? And the themes are evergreen. Um, so they never try and reinvent the wheel, but they, they continue to tell like new stories that can evoke the same themes to play in the same kind of cultural concepts. There's so many people that are so excited. So, and, you know, I'm one of them. I mean, Godzilla is franchise has been around for every ever everyone knows Godzilla yeah everyone knows Godzilla <laughs> everyone also knows the young and the restless how yes. would how would uh, Godzilla fare against some of you guys on the show I don't know I'm not letting Godzilla near me on the young and the restless I know it might not be a good idea Godzilla would have to stay away from us Herman Munster could use a uh, kaiju pet maybe maybe yeah well I mean he had spots so I did have a, an experience with a reptile myself. Yeah. I love Godzilla. I love movies with big, um, extravagant plots with a lot of action, so I'm really excited. What are your expectations for tonight? I am expected to be spooked. I'm expected to be scared. I'm expected to feel like it's massive on the screen and just um, I hope that my heart is racing. Do not miss out on what many are saying is one of the best Godzilla films ever made. Godzilla Minus One is in theaters this Friday. In my opinion, Godzilla Minus One is a fantastic film to watch on the big screen. 
It's everything you'd expect from Toho and a well-rounded story that everyone can enjoy. Well, that's all the time we have for today. As you can see, we have been super busy. So do me a favor, give this video a like, and hit that subscribe button as we continue to bring you the latest and greatest in pop culture. With News by Muse, as always, I'm Manny Gomez. Yeah.